All right, that's the one and only Ashley Nicole Moss who joins us right now. You're talking about John Morant. And, and we've, we've mentioned him a, a lot in the last couple of weeks. So, so the latest on him is that he's out a minimum of four more games. We don't know how long um, mm -hmm. this absence from the Grizzlies will last. But just uh, your, your top of mind thoughts now, another day to think about where the Grizzlies are without Ja, where Ja is without the Grizzlies. Uh, what, what do you think about the situation he's in right now? I mean, the team's going to suffer, right? It's unfortunate. Um, John Morant is a star. He's one hell of a basketball player, and he's only going to get better. He's only 23 years old, so the sky is the limit for him. And unfortunately, the situation is affecting not only him and his, able, his ability to be productive for his team, but it's also affecting the team's ability to be productive without him at the worst possible time. You know, it's going to be expected of them to slip in the standings um, in the Western Conference. And it didn't have to be that way. But when you make choices, there are action, there are repercussions to those choices, whether good or bad. In this situation, it's bad not only for him, but it's also bad for his team. But like I said in that video, multiple things can be true, and I still stand by that. I think that John Moran is a perfect example of getting lost in the sauce. Sometimes when you get a lot, and I know people say, well, he didn't come from nothing, and he get, I'm not here to go ahead and dive and deep dive and armchair diagnose his upbringing. But what you can go ahead and agree with is that whatever he had growing up is not even a fraction of what he has as an NBA player. That level of access is completely different. And I know people say, well, he's not a rookie. Correct. But his star has drastically risen in the last year. And that comes with a lot more eyes. That comes with a lot more access. It just comes with a lot more stuff. So I believe that between getting lost in that a little bit and also maybe not being able to deal with the drastic incline of his star in a healthy way, it's just a, a, a snowball effect. And we're seeing the results of that here. You know what, Ashley, I, I just thought about this. Um, and I, I think part of it was, I'll give Paul Pierce credit for mm -hmm. leading me to this thought, because he made an idiotic point, Pierce did. But I'm gonna give him credit because he led me to think about what I would need in this situation. So, Paul mm -hmm. Pierce, if you missed it, did you see his tweet? Did you see his tweet? I did. did you see I did. Oh, yeah. Dude, dude. Okay, let me ask you, Paul. Oh, oh, here we go. So, Paul Pierce says, hey, we glorify and normalize all the rappers, mm -hmm. wave guns, and make millions. I'm trying to understand, uh, make this make sense, spelled wrong. What crime did mm -hmm. you commit? All right, so, Paul. So I, I remember that meeting, Paul Pierce, when when all the uh, NBA teams and the commissioner got together and said, hey, guys, since it's, it's worked so well in hip hop and aspects of hip hop, I want you all to show your guns when you go in the when you go in the club, right. show your gun. Right. And then if you have a deal, if you happen to have a deal with Nike, Nike will like it when you do this. I mean, just an idiotic mm -hmm. point from Paul Pierce. I can't believe he, I, he, he must have been trolling he, or missing a really important part he's a basketball player not a rapper as Shaq said uh, and yeah, yeah you can yeah you know the saying the saying what's good for the goose what's good for the gander sounds good but that's not always the case you know an NBA player is held to a drastically different standard than a rapper you know rappers <laughs> tend to yeah. you know monetize off of that that whole persona right but in the NBA right. It's about what you do on the court. It's a team sport. You're a reflection of a business. As a rapper, those record labels know exactly what they get when they sign certain rappers, and that rapper represents themselves. They don't represent an entire multi-billion organization, other teams, future players. Like it just, it's a drastically different comparison. So I'm not quite sure what he was trying to get at that, but it's not really remotely close to the same thing. So. I don't know what he was trying to get at either, but I, I but this is where it led me. So what? Okay, mm -hmm. if I were in this position, if I if I'm in this position, or if I know somebody in this position, what are the two things, or you know, a, a couple of things that I really want that person to have to protect them? And I would say the number one thing I, I want them to do is be around a, a small group of people, a small mm -hmm. inner circle that includes some people who say no. 
Mm -hmm. I, I don't want I don't want a bunch of yes women and yes men around me. I want mm -hmm. some people who will tell me no. And uh, I, I think I need some and more boundaries. I think everybody, whether they're famous or not, everybody Listen, needs, it's... every good relationship needs boundaries, right? Every everybody can't come, Michael. And what I mean by that is I think there's this mentality, yeah. especially with our within our community, that you kind of want to take everybody with you, your day ones. You want to take this cousin and that cousin and this aunt and that aunt and this uncle and that uncle's uncle's aunt. But you want to take everybody because that's kind of how we're brought up is to to keep it within the family, you know, whether that's blood or whether that's just family by choice. But one thing you learn, especially as you get older, and again, this goes to John Morant being young, is that you realize that people are in your life for reasons and for seasons, and not everybody can come. And there's a lot of people from your day ones, you know, from, from your old hood, your old neighborhood, whether that's middle class, lower middle class, whether that's the projects, whether that's the gated community, that may not always have the best interest or your best interest at heart. And you have to go ahead and hire and fire accordingly. Because at the end of the day, John Morant is the CEO of John Morant and the business and the brand that is John Morant. And he needs to go ahead and realize what is an asset to that business and what is a liability to that business and move accordingly. And unfortunately, that does not always come easy to young guys it's, or young women. It's something you unfortunately have to learn the hard way because you kind of want to take everybody with you because you're like, well, they were friends with me when I wasn't anyone. Well, you're somebody now. And sometimes you got to go ahead and be like, it's been real. It's no animosity, but you can't come with me. And that's it's a, it's a lesson you that you learn with time. Uh, let, let's switch it up here uh, in the time that we have left and, and talk about Lamar Jackson. You have some mm -hmm. uh, interesting things to say. I want you to listen mm -hmm. to you. And then we'll come back <laughs> and, 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 then, and then we'll talk with you if that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> the Ravens keep saying the same things. I can't imagine life without a quarterback and Lamar Jackson's our guy and we're going to have a deal done by this date. And it's when is it actually going to happen? You know what I mean? Like, when are you actually going to change? Whether you when are you actually going to make sure that your words and your actions meet? We are very much aware that you cannot win in the NFL without a franchise quarterback. We are very much aware that Lamar Jackson is your guy. Are you aware of that? They're well, not aware. Apparently they're not. They're not aware. Apparently they're not. <laughs> right? they're not. They're not aware. And let me ask hey. you this, because I mentioned that I mentioned the five desperate teams, the five most desperate teams for Lamar Jackson. On my list was not Atlanta. Atlanta mm -hmm. should be on there too, along with many others. What's your take on teams not really rushing to even have a conversation, not sign them, to even have a conversation yeah. with Lamar Jackson? It's a big, it's a big C word. It's collusion. That's what it is. I mean, it's pretty obvious. I don't think that it takes a rocket scientist to figure that out. Um, you know, none of these teams, I believe, are even in a position, minus the Raiders, perhaps, to even be able to utilize Lamar Jackson in the way he deserves to be utilized. I mean, he's a quarterback who can win you a Super Bowl in the right situation. I want to say four out of those five teams are kind of, maybe I'll, I'll give the commanders some credit. So I'll say three out of the five teams are just in disarray. Like, you don't want him to go there. But it's unfortunate that we just came off of a season where Deshaun Watson got an an astronomical amount of money before the 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 results of his situation were even solidified and now you have a Lamar Jackson we're always preaching about the intangibles the intangibles is he a locker room guy but how is he off the court how does I mean the field how does he represent the brand how does he represent the organization you have a guy who meets all of those intangibles and yet it's still not enough I don't know how else you can explain it except there's something in the water and if it walks like a duck quacks like a duck it's probably a duck it's definitely a little fishy in the nfl that's for sure yeah i mean there are a lot of teams and, and i just mentioned those five atlanta is six there are some teams that we've gotten so used to the way they do business we just kind of ignore them I, okay I'll, I'll give you an example the steelers Mm -hmm. We're so used to the Steelers. Oh, no, they don't spend in free agency. They wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. It's a divisional. It's, you got Kenny Pickett at quarterback. No disrespect. You got Kenny Pickett. And Lamar Jackson is twice as good as Kenny Pickett. 
-hmm. and you can take the quarterback away from your divisional opponent, you should be having a conversation at the least. I'm not saying sign them. But th th like, I, I just don't understand how you're not even doing, you know, you're not kicking tires. Shame on all of them. This is a I think team San Francisco, problem. San Francisco's another one. Well, San Francisco's Jimmy a weird Drop situation because they, they, they put a lot of stock into Trey Lance. I think they're going to have to go ahead and stick with that okay. horse for a but, little while. But they, but but they were going to roll with Purdy. But Purdy's hurt. That's true. Purdy's not going to be there at the beginning of the season. Jimmy Garoppolo, you said you're not bringing him back. Now you got it's Trey suspect. Lance. Unproven. There's he something fishy going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Ashley, always great talking with you. You know, you know you can stop by anytime. Just come on through, <laughs> anytime. Great to see you. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.